Hi, I'm Dominic Caccolini, and this is Art in a Day, and I'm coming to you from the beautiful Crystal Bridges Museum in Benville, Arkansas. Crystal Bridges Museum opened November 11, 2011, as a result of the tireless work done by Walton family member Alice Walton. The structure, designed by Moshe Safadai, is a downright breathtaking work of art, made to resemble what it houses on the inside. Crystal Bridges, to one surprise, is open to the public free of charge. Crystal Bridges houses many beautiful artworks, styles ranging from early colonial to present day modern works. Such famous artists as Andy Warhol, George O'Keefe, and Norman Rockwell grace these walls, but one work truly caught my eye due to its stylistic techniques and overall approach. And this work is William Robinson Lay's painting, A Close Call. This painting is located at the beginning of the museum in the colonial to early 19th century section and is an oil on canvas piece. This piece really sets itself apart from the rest with its overall composition of intense subject matter. The realness this work portrays is second to none. One cannot help but feel as if they are in the scene and experiencing the drama going on. I really like this work for the pure fact of its connection with its viewers. This work also hits the natural outdoorsy side of myself, so I really enjoy the detail and time taken to display an accurate wilderness scene. Artist of this work, William Marley, is known as being one of the top wilderness painters in the world, and his craftsmanship is put on display in this work. Lay studied art for 12 years at the Royal Academy in Munich, thus leading to the nickname the Sagebrush Rembrandt, for his mixture of European styles with Western subject matter. From the early 1900s until his death, Lay was absorbed in the wilderness. Traveling to and from the American West, he painted such vibrant, accurate paintings with Western subjects as Indians, cowboys, and wildlife such as shown in this painting done by Lay. He was the last surviving member of the famous Western painting trio that included Frederick Remington and Charles Russell. This painting, A Close Call, is actually a take on another painting theme and concept. Arthur William Tate's The Life of a Hunter at Type Fix is a painting done in 1856 and is the main inspiration to William Lay's Close Call. Now that you have absorbed both of the works, now you can see that there is some similarities between them and the subject matter, but there are many differences between the two. For example, the titles of each relate different messages. Tate's a tight fix tilts more towards being a little more pessimistic, while Lay's a close call has more of a positive outlook on it. The paintings also differ in color usage used in each. A tight fix has a far more limited color palette than that of a close call, in which the settings are a multitude of colors due to it being fall and the, and the multicolored animals. The overall feel of each is different as well. Lay's has a more gripping, tense feeling to it, in which makes you get nervous, while Tate's is a far more calmer and doesn't connect you to the work as a viewer. At the first overall glance of a close call, it looks as if the person on the ground is a goner. Though he has his dog soaking around his team, it seems truly bleak that he survives. The title seems to give the painting hope, at least the fact that this person might actually end up okay. The artist aids to this first pessimistic glance of this work by his classical composition of the subjects in it. The triangular configuration from the top of the bear's head to the man draws the viewer's eyes to that very relationship of the scene. Adding on to this triangle, the artist throws in a circle of dogs to add even more emphasis on the area, as if there already wasn't enough. This halo reinforces Lay's views on the importance of looking at this piece of this piece of the work first. As one looks closer in this piece, you see a man in the top left running in part to help. This not so noticeable man plays a key component in the work because he has the best chance for the person on the ground to have a chance to live. The overemphasis of the man on the ground, the bear with the dogs surrounding, in comparison to the blurry image of the man in the background, shows the progression a viewer would go through in this work. A progression of thinking, taking a full turn from no hope of no hope to a glimmer of hope, and possible rescue. The drama in this work really just draws you in and doesn't let go. Now may we talk about the detailed work done in this painting. Lay was not a painter to use much detail, but in a close call, all the central figures are very detailed and clearly depicted. Such examples as the claws of the bear, the muscle strain of the forearm to show struggle, and the gun in the holster of the man's belt exemplify the detail that he took in this work. The most detailed part of this work is the forest slash wilderness setting in the background, in which gives viability to the location and setting of the scene. Look at the barren branches in the foliage. These demonstrate the expertise and exquisite work of Lay at its finest. Such detailed work reminds me of my hikes that I have been on. Every aspect of the wilderness setting is done to a tee. 
Now may we look at the color scheme of this work, and which is one of the best things about the painting in my eyes. A key element of the coloration is the counterbalance of colors in which blacks and whites play hand in hand in the composition. Such example as the bear being two-toned, a brown stomach progressing into a black extremity. The extreme white bark and white accents of the ground cover used below the scene create variation throughout the work. Artist does this in order to make this painting pop. This painting could have easily been too brown, being that the natural scene of the brown leaves with the bear and the dogs could have just been a big blob of brown. But Lee, but Lay, who is known for his bright contrasting colors in his western pieces, wanted a sharp contrast in order to make certain things emphasized. A great example of this in the work is the man in the back left has a bright piece of bark jutting out just beneath him in order to draw some attention to his important presence in the work. Another aspect that the extreme whites and blacks bring to this work is that you feel more emotion and feelings in it. It is almost like a heat sensor in which you can almost feel the pulse of the work. This was Art in a Day with Donnie Tacklini. I hope you all enjoyed my breakdown of a truly great piece of art, A Close Call by William Robinson Lane. If you all have a free day here in the near future, go check out Christopher Bridges. It is quite a sight.